This video is sponsored by Sennheiser, and that's why it sounds so good. This is the Sony 16 to 25 f 2.8 G lens, and according to Sony, it'll deliver superior optical quality while still being versatile and compact. What they're talking about there is that this is a direct competitor to the Tamron 17 to 28, as well as the 16 to 28 from Sigma, and also kind of a competitor to their own 16 to 35 f 4 power zoom, and also to their 16 to 35 G Master version 2. There's a lot of lenses in this category now, but what this lens promises is something close to G Master quality, but at basically half the price and way smaller and lighter. So the question is, does it live up? In this video, we're gonna talk about the size, weight, and price compared to those other options. We'll go over build quality, features, and feel of the lens. We'll talk about image quality and lens performance, including that somewhat strange focal range. And I'll give some thoughts on my experience shooting with this lens over the last little while. And I'll give my recommendation on whether you should think about picking this up or maybe just go with one of those other ones. But to kick things off, I've got a short video where I put this lens to the test in some pretty harsh lighting conditions so you can decide for yourself how you think it performed. So secure the cup and enjoy. The following segment was filmed entirely on the Sony 16 to 25 f 2.8 G lens and the Sony a7C Mark II. There's a mocking bird sitting in a tree and he sings his song while he's looking at me does he know my heart can he feel my heavy soul that he sees the things that nobody knows look into these eyes of kindness and truth Remember times of innocence and youth Like a little child who wants to be a man In a big bad world, he'll take it if he can It's time I settle down You know that I'm around to Be there when you need a friend That flowed, burning like a flame And the mockingbird, his song is still the same That he sings at night, calling to his dear It's a lullaby that only she can hear Real quick here, I wanna take a second to tell you why I'm holding a microphone in the middle of a forest. This little box at the end of the mic is called the SKP Plug-On Transmitter by Sennheiser, and it's a new part of their EWDP series. This is exciting for both pro and enthusiast video shooters for a couple of reasons. First off, you can plug any XLR microphone into this that you want. And I don't just mean dynamic microphones like some other plug-on transmitters, I mean any microphone. Because the SKP offers 48 volt phantom power, I can use this mic, the iconic Sennheiser MKH4, 416 or any other condenser microphone too. But regardless of which microphone you want to use, this is going to open you up to using any XLR microphones even if your camera doesn't have XLR capabilities. The system uses the professional UHF standard for transmission, so you're going to get fantastic connection, less dropouts in areas where there might be lots of interference. Plus, I love the magnetic cold shoe rig that they have for the receiver. And if you don't want to use the XLR capabilities and prefer to stick with 
with a lav mic, you can totally do that too. But the icing on the cake is that the SKP has a micro SD with the ability to record 32-bit float full quality files directly from the microphone. So you can use it as a standalone recorder or as a backup to the signal that's going to your camera. If you want to take a look at the SKP either as an extra addition to your current Sennheiser gear or in a kit with other Evolution wireless products, there's a link down in the description just for you. Huge thank you to Sennheiser for sponsoring this video. One of the biggest selling features of this lens is definitely the compact nature of it. While the 16 to 35 G Master version 2 is wonderfully magnificent and more compact than the previous version, it's still not what I would consider a compact lens. The 16 to 25, however, manages to come in at 409 grams, making it lighter than all of the other lenses in the category except the 16 to 35 f/4. And it's also only 91.4 millimeters long, making it the shortest of them all, again, except for the 16 to 35 f4. But it is important to mention here that the barrel of this lens does extend a little bit and the Tamron does not. And when this one is extended, it becomes almost exactly the same length as the Tamron. So it's still smaller in your bag as long as you don't leave that barrel out. And one thing to note here is that this lens is nearly the same size as the 24 to 50 2.8G lens that Sony just released. And it feels like we're building up a bit of a series here. As far as the price, goes, this comes in at $1,200 US. For comparison, the G Master version 2 is $2,300, so this is more than $1,000 less expensive than the G Master version. But the Tamron and Sigma competitors both come in at $900 US, so this is still the most expensive of those shorter range options. These newest additions to the Sony G line of lenses is almost indistinguishable in terms of materials and build quality from the G Master lenses. The 16 to 25 looks and feels just like a miniaturized version of my 16 to 35 G Master version 2. We've definitely got a great feeling build quality and balance, especially when paired with something like an A7C2 or an A7CR. This lens has dust and moisture resistance and a fluorine coating on that front element, which is pretty much standard at this point for Sony lenses. We've got a 67 millimeter front filter thread, which is the same as the 24 to 50. There's a focus toggle, a customizable button, and a manual aperture adjustment on this lens. And while the aperture adjustment does have the ability to de-click, they left out the lock on this one, which is totally fine by me. There's a good amount of resistance getting it in and out of the A mode, so I'm really not too worried about it. The zoom ring has a nice amount of resistance while still being smooth and the barrel doesn't extend too far, so when you're using it on a gimbal, it isn't gonna make any difference, pretty much. The manual focusing has a linear response, so if you're using focus motors or doing manual repeated focus pulls for video, you should be totally fine with this. The autofocusing was built to keep up with the fastest Sony camera, so you should have no problem using it for 120 frames per second video, or if you have the A9 Mark III, 120 frames per second in photos. And inside, we've got Sony's dual linear motor so it is fast, smooth, and silent. In terms of image quality and performance, there is a lot to love about this lens. It really does perform quite closely to the G Master version 2 almost annoyingly close as an owner of that lens. There is a reasonable amount of distortion going on with this lens if you turn off distortion compensation in the camera. Overall, I recommend leaving lens distortion compensation on in camera, and hopefully Lightroom will have a profile for this lens soon. Capture One seems to be able to use a manufacturer profile that's built into the files from the lens, but it's not quite fixing everything that's going on here. We've also got some vignetting going on when shooting at f2.8, but stop down to f4 or pass that seems to get rid of it for the most part again pretty normal stuff nothing i'd worry about chromatic aberration is extremely well controlled causing me zero issues when i was shooting with this lens looking at both high contrast situations and out of focus areas i was seeing very little in terms of colors that shouldn't be there speaking of which i thought the bokeh and out of focus areas on this lens were really pleasing and neutral so if you're thinking about going with the f2.8 version instead of the f4 to try and get nice blurry backgrounds, 
you got it. In terms of sharpness and practical use, I was really happy with how this lens performed. Being able to punch way in and still get crisp details, it was great. I also did some tests against the Tamron and both versions of the G Master lenses, and it held its own, no problem. The center is super sharp and the edges are really great, outperforming both the Tamron and the version one G Master. And again, it was annoyingly close to the G Master version two. Unfortunately, I don't have the Sony F4 or the Sigma at the moment to do direct tests against those. That being said, one of the things that this lens performs better than any of the other lenses is focus breathing, or more accurately, having almost none. I actually had to double check that I had turned off breathing compensation when I was doing the tests because you don't really need it with this lens. This is great because even when you do turn on focus breathing compensation in camera, which I highly recommend you do, it's not going to crop in nearly as much as it is with the other Sony options. And with the third party lenses, you just can't use that at all. And we also have a really great close focusing distance of 18 centimeters at the wide end and 24 centimeters at the long end. I actually bumped into a tree once trying to reach the minimum focusing distance. In terms of my experience with this lens, let's start off with the elephant in the room, 16 to 25. What the heck is that? Not 24, not 35, 25. It sounds like they just mashed together 24 and 35. So obviously compared to all the other options that I've mentioned, this has the shortest zoom range, which is definitely a limiting factor. The difference between 25 millimeters and 28 millimeters is not huge, but it is definitely noticeable when you're doing side-by-side -side comparisons. But the difference between 25 and 35 is something that you actually feel when you're out using it, even if it's not in a side-by-side -side situation. This is something that I said when I reviewed the 16 to 28 from Sigma as well. I love the compact nature of it. I love the quality, but boy, do I miss that extra reach sometimes. It is interesting to note that when doing some side-by-side -side tests without ever moving the camera, 16 millimeters on this lens was wider than either versions of the G Master, and it was obviously a bit wider than the 17 millimeter Tamron, but I was expecting that because it's 17 millimeters. I'm not sure if that just has to do with the fact that the G Master lenses are bigger, so they were technically closer to the subject, but regardless, it does allow you to work in tighter spaces with this lens. However, even with those limitations, the overall experience shooting with this lens was actually really great. Being a G Master version 2 owner, I felt right at home here. It looks almost the same, it feels almost the same, it responds in the same ways that I'm used to. It definitely had the wow factor that I always look for when I'm out shooting with a new lens. If I can take those first couple of photos and it gets me excited to take more, you know we're definitely on to something. Not to mention my back definitely thanked me for the noticeable difference of carrying this lens around in the place of the heavier G Master version 2. Maybe not a big deal for shorter bursts, but for big hikes, for landscape, nature, travel, photo, and video folks, every ounce or gram counts. But here's the thing, I keep thinking of this against my G Master version 2, but it's much more likely that people are pitting this against the Tamron and the Sigma. So how do you know which one you should buy? You don't, I'm not telling you. Firstly, of course, the price. Yes, this lens is going to be a few hundred dollars more than those other two options, the Sigma and the Tamron. So if that's going to be the limiting factor for you, full stop, go get one of those other ones. I'd probably say the Sigma and call it a day. You'll be happy. However, if you can afford to put the extra couple hundred dollars up, I would seriously consider this lens. Optically, I believe it is the best performer of the three. They're all decent, but this one definitely got me excited to shoot. Secondly, the focus breathing is so minimal that if you do any focus stacking, or if you're a video shooter, it makes so much sense to go with this lens. Whether you're vlogging, making travel films, TikToks, whatever, focus breathing can be really distracting on any lens, and this nearly eliminates it internally. But on top of that, if your camera has it, you can also use focus breathing compensation on this lens where you can't with the Tamron or the Sigma. So you're just stuck with whatever 
autofocus breathing they have. While the Tamron and the Sigma do work just fine in terms of autofocus with Sony cameras, there is just something about Sony lenses with their newest focus motors that makes them the best performing of the bunch. I paired this lens mostly with an a7C Mark II and it just continually performed exactly how I wanted it to without me having to redo shots or mess around with too many settings to get it to react the way it should. So in my opinion, the extra couple hundred dollars compared to the Tamron or the Sigma would be well spent for the breathing compensation alone, but also for the fact that Sony glass just works the best on Sony cameras. As always, I wanna hear what you think. Will you be picking up the Sony 16 to 25 F 2.8G lens? Leave a comment below and on your way down, like, subscribe and hit that bell notification button. Huge thank you to Sennheiser for sponsoring this video and making it sound so good. And thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Am I in focus? Good, I'm good. Here we go. One, two, three, into the four. I feel like when I have a mic, I should do something fancy with it. Ah. I just saw a bald eagle. It was very low.